When I began Big Eden, I looked back at sort of the films of the 1930s and 40s and the Catherine Hepburn, Cary Grant romantic comedies, and those were always the films that inspired me. And I just sort of wanted to do a version of that where the two guys were men. <laughs> Looking at sort of the subject matter of some other recent gay films, I saw, you know, young white men in their 20s, you know, and the issues were around sex. With Big Eden, I really wanted to explore issues of intimacy and show that gay people come in all sorts of different shapes, all sorts of different colors and sizes, and that we have real intimate relationships with family, with friends, straight friends, gay friends, whatever, and show that we are whole people. In making a gay film, there are a number of elements that everybody seems to bring up. It's, you know, it's got to have cute guys, it's got to have, you know, some shirtless, got to have some nudity, got to have some sex, got to be young, got to be good looking. And I was so happy as I started reading the film that it, it took me to a completely different world, to a completely different place. And from there, in getting involved, Tom and I had very serious discussions about raising the bar. Oh! They think, oh, you can only make gay films for under $500,000 because they, you know, nobody wants to see them. They can't be bigger than that. It has to take place in an urban, in an urban setting. And I just, I, you know, I think people need to be given a little more credit. Can you believe that? Henry, I wouldn't have known you, boy. Also, I, I think that within gay films sometimes, it's easy to set up the straight, group as the antagonist, that everything would be fine for the gay hero if there were no bigotry. And Big Eden was very much an experiment in taking away the bigotry. Once you, if you take away all the obstacles that could be presented to a gay person, does that person have an easier life? And I think the answer is that life is just hard for everybody. In other films, we've seen straight characters push lovers together. But I think it's unusual to see a film where straight characters uh, encourage gay lovers to come together. I appreciate your concern. It's just because we're looking out for you is all. And I said I appreciate it. That goes for all of you. Pike, it's plain he's taken. Although I never see him come in just for the mail. No, he made a special trip of it. I think he wanted to talk. Yeah, well, that's some great help there, Lloyd. I wanted to get involved in Big Eden because when I read it, it really took me by surprise. For instance, you're in, it, it wasn't predictable to me. Every time I thought I knew what was going to happen, Tom took me in a different direction. That over there is Earl Stevens, general counsel, all the way up from Missoula. When you think the town's going to be homophobic or somebody might have an issue, she throws a party for him with all men. When you think that the other people, the townsfolk are, again, going to have an issue, you know, or that sexuality is going to be an issue, they're rooting for him, and, and ultimately the town is, they want everybody to be happy, and they're trying to bring these two guys together. And that is something I hadn't seen yet. We talk about sort of this community, but it's a really intimate community. It's really about these tighter, closer, really intimate relationships and how those how those are created within a community. And the reactions of the people in this town to each other, and, and not just sort of on the gay issue, but on issues of race with Pike and, you know, multi-generational issues that there are old people in the town. It's, it's about a community that embraces its own diversity. Big Eden, you know, it may not be right now, but it's not that far off. And by going and filming in Montana, we somehow contributed to maybe, just by going there, to maybe bringing it closer. Um, and that was a good feeling.